Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Med Miracle Network's Wednesday Meditation Gathering. I'm so glad you're all here to share this time with together. Meditation gathers power and strength when we meditate together. And this morning we will have Sabir will lead us into meditation and then we'll have 20 minutes of silence. After that, we'll open it up for sharing. And, um, and, we'll get, and, and then at 10.45, we'll end it. And, um, and you're all on mute, so over to you, Sabir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dan. Okay, I'd like to start by just reading a, a couple of paragraphs from Lesson 97 of A Course in Miracles. Okay, so Lesson 97, A Course in Miracles. I am spirit. Today's ide idea identifies you with your one self. It accepts no split identity, nor tries to weave opposing factors in unity. It si simply states the truth. Practice this truth today as often as you can, for it will bring your mind from conflict to the quiet fields of peace. No chill or fear can enter for your mind has been absolved from madness, letting go of illusions of a split identity. And paragraph four, you are the spirit in whose mind abides the miracle in which all time stands still. The miracle in which a minute spent in using these ideas become It looks like Sabir lost contact, so uh, we'll just wait for him to come back in. That happened to me down a second ago. I don't know what it is. I just lost contact, then I came back again. Yeah. Okay, we'll get there. Me too. Hi, right. Sabir. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. So. Sabir's on mute now. Sabir, could you, that's it. Um, Sabir, if you could uh, oh, yes. unmute here. yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just read that paragraph again. So you are the spirit in whose mind abides the miracle in which all time stands still. The miracle in which a minute spent in using these ideas becomes a time that has no limit and has no end. Give then these minutes willingly and count on him who promised to lay timelessness beside them. He will offer all his strength to every little effort you make. Give him the minutes which he needs today to help you understand with him, you are the spirit that abides in him and that calls through his voice to every living thing, offers his sight to everyone who asks, rep replaces error with the simple truth. Okay, so for me, I love that uh, Course in Miracles lesson there. And doing the Course in Miracles for me, the, the things that I got from, from that lesson, which really uh, reminds, reminds me to abide in the truth beyond, beyond conflict and opposing factors. And that for me is the, the separation that my ego creates. Um, when I'm identified, and it talks about in, in the beginning, identifying myself with my true self. Uh, and so for me, doing the course lessons, it's, you know, the course lessons are in the first part, helping me to disidentify with my ego self. And it talked there about uh, various factors, like uh, from time to timelessness. And for me, the, you know, the course lessons, one of my favorite course lessons are the early lessons where I'm saying that, you know, the table is just as meaningless as the lamp. And actually for me, my ego, which for me creates a sense of separation 
in this moment. It creates the idea of a sense of time, a sense of body, and a sense of thinkingness and individuality, a, a separate self, if you like, in relation to other. So for me, like doing the course lessons for me is just undoing that. And I really love disidentifying from the thing that is me, that is creating this sense of separation by just letting go, letting go of the sense of me creating opposites or contrasting or conflicting uh, uh, experience in this present moment. So that for me is not intellectual. It's like, how do I experience myself right now? And can I let go of the me being meaningful? Um, for example, I mean, the course tells me I'm not a body. I am free for I am as God created me. So if I sense right now that I'm a body, can I let that go? Can I experience myself beyond body, bodiless? If I experience myself in time, if there's an unconscious tracking of time, like something in the background is counting one second gone, two seconds gone, can I render that meaningless and let that go and experience my timeless self? If I let go of experiencing myself as a body, can I let that go? Can that be meaningless? Can I pray for a miracle, ask the Holy Spirit to let go of my experience of my body in separation, creating a separation? And can I experience myself as more limitless than the body? Am I tracking thoughts in separation, you know, from the separated mind to the infinite mind? Can I let go of those individual thoughts that create a sense of a me thinking, an individual me or a me in separation thinking? And can I experience a more infinite mind than my more limited experience of mind? Um, so there's time, as that lesson talked, to timelessness. There's the individual mind or the separated mind. Can I render that meaningless or let that go? Or disidentify with my limited thinking to get to more infinite expanse, a more infinite experience beyond time a more infinite experience beyond my limited body in this moment. And as if I experience any form of separation or limitation, can I let go of the meaning? Can I pray for a miracle to let it go and just be at peace, to be in stillness, to be non-identified with separation, with fear, with anything of limitation? to experience something beyond my limited thinking, my limited body, my limited experience of fear? Can I be in that experience of oneness rather than in separation? So for me, it's like identifying what am I? What am I right now? Am I a body in limitation to other bodies? Am I a mind in separation, in a separated mind in relation to other minds? Or is there just one mind? Is there just one spirit? Am I at one? Or am I in separation? Am I in time or am I in timelessness? Am I in limitation or am I limitless? And if I f feel any sense of fear, of limited thinking, of limited body, of limited time. Can I pray for a miracle and let that go and experience what's beyond this in oneness? Can I be at peace? Can I be beyond all limitation and fear? And for me, as it says in that lesson, for me, time is just a tool for me to let go of any form of separation so that I can be at one and at peace with all. Thank you. Susan, I'll hand over to you.
Okay, everyone, open your eyes, slowly come back into the room. And um, now we have left uh, 17 minutes for uh, sharing your experience or questions, comments, whatever you like. If you'd like to say something, please raise your hand and uh, I'll invite you to put, take yourself off of mute. Where was that? Oh, yes. Okay, Celia. Can you hear me? Yes, good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabia. That was, um, that was incredibly useful. <laughs> the, the, the lead up to your, um, to the meditation, the information that you gave us, um gave me new it felt as though you were giving me a whole range of new tools with which to explore those places in myself that i need to be able to release and uh, as a result i um uh, the, the first part of the meditation i was a bit all over the place because it was it was just too exciting to have all this new information. But then I did fall still and that was, that was beautiful. Um, I, I don't normally have any difficulty going quite deep in meditation quite, quite quickly because I've been doing it for such a long time, I suppose. But, um, but I, I shall very much enjoy going to the, um, the recording of this, this this morning and being able to listen again to that information that you gave us so thank you thank you that was that was really really helpful thank you so much thank you would anyone like to uh, uh say something comment or a question how was the experience for you dennis take yourself off mute I've come to the conclusion that God has a wonderful sense of humor. Because uh, when you read that part of the lesson, that time stands still, <laughs> it all went off. My computer went off to a blank screen, then came back on again. For, and it took a few minutes. <laughs> I thought, well, that's appropriate. Um, I have experienced quite a few times being out of body. The first time I was like, the observer watching what was going on. The second time, I just finished making love to my wife and I was floating up at the ceiling. And it was a beautiful experience. And I looked down and looked at myself and I thought, well, this is better here. <laughs> and I, 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 I wanted to stay in that place out of body because it was wonderful. And the third time was after a meditation with a beautiful experience. And I, I was one with everything. The universe, I was a stone, a blade of grass. There wasn't a place where I wasn't. And I shall read lesson 93 again today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can I come in? Can say yes, a few words about that? Thank you. That's so beautiful. And I loved, I loved what you said there. And I, I do the observer practice or the witnesser to undo. Um, if I'm a body, can I be that which is uh, observing the body, can I be the observer of the body and not the body? And that helps me to unhook out of my um, unconscious need to identify with my body. And then I experience those more infinite states that you talk about. For me, the, the whole, all the ego does, in, uh, in my view, is it just wants to identify with separation in all its forms. So I hook in, you know, zoom into the body by hooking in and giving meaning to the body, to time, to location, to this and that, whatever it is. And I think th those are the mystical experiences, because if I'm not hooking into time, into body, into separation, into me and you, and all into any concepts or unconscious beliefs that I've picked up, then those infinite experiences of, of being at one, those mystical experiences of being free of the body and being free of all limitations and being at one with everything. Reveal, I'm ha I've had a few near death um, and other mystical experiences where time stands still 
and there's an infinite oneness and a sacredness to to the instant and timelessness so that's so beautiful and i think it those mystical experiences of actually leaving the body and being at one and in those fields of infinite love are so beautiful and and to bear witness to that so thank you for what you said thank you how do you stay there <laughs> now I stay in with the Course in Miracle lessons for me I love and really it's just like a reminder whatever lesson I'm on can I let go of any sense of separation that for me is the core of each lesson am I trapped in my body can I be free of the body and my belief in the body can I be free of the belief in time can I be free in all ideas of separation and that continuous um, daily practice and even moment by moment practice uh, that mindfulness not to go into the separation and into the fear then creates for me a greater expansion a greater experience of that more time those more timeless fields so i think it is the problem is the ego it's very easy to get hooked back into this world into the body into the limited thinking into all the fear-based concepts of this world so that daily practice for me is like an immunity to get caught back into the illusion thank you that's wonderful thank you um we have a comment in the chat window thank you so much sabir that was a wonderful experience thank you who'd like to uh, uh say something have a comment okay annie and john uh let me annie there you go Hi there. Now I just thank you for the reminder, Sabine, because um, I love the practice in meditation of, of trying to experience what is it like if I am not in my body. And you reminded me again today to do that. It is really um, powerful to actually focus on. It's not that you focus. You, you, you can use the observing self, which is a wonderful step where you stand back and look at yourself. But there's a step beyond that if you practice that is, I can't put it in words, but you reminded me today to do it. And I shall go back to doing that. To, to practice not being a body when I'm meditating is, is good fun. <laughs> so thank you for the reminder. Yes, uh, that, 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 thank you so much. Yeah, for me, a, any form of separation that I experience to try and undo it or pray for a miracle for it to be released from me and to go to those deeper fields of the infinite and the more limitless, the more the fields of greater oneness and love. Absolutely. And it be, it, it's something beyond words um, because any, anytime you use words, it creates the sense of a, a separation or, or duality or, or doing something in time. And the ultimate fields are beyond words and beyond beyond time and beyond thinking. Thank you. We have a comment in the chat window. When a physical ailment arises to disrupt, disrupt your meditation, what is the best way to proceed? I love that question because um, I got to meet a Course in Miracles teacher in Sedona, Arizona who, who um, it was a Course in Miracles teacher and he let go of about 23 illnesses, a very famous chap. And, um, and, and he talked about, uh, he, he, he did one of the attitudinal healing centers there. And uh, of all the miracles from uh, serious and life-threatening illnesses, I got to meet the guy and I had so many miracles with health. And for me, the, uh, the spiritual lessons of A Course in Miracles you know, uh, uh, lesson 14, God did not create cancer, it's not real. Or just releasing these beliefs in illness and limitation. Also doing the observer, whenever I had, uh, whenever I had feel like exhaustion, is there something here that's observing the exhaustion? Can I let go? Is there something beyond the exhaustion? If I'm having pain, can I stop making a story about the pain? Can I just let it be? and let it dissolve away without fighting or resisting it. So for me, or being the observer of the pain, or just being at one and stop making a story about it or labeling it, or trying to make a story of suffering, to be at one and then experience it slowly dissolve away. So for me, in um, physical illness is actually great. And it's in fact one of the best tools in my experience of actually applying 
the spiritual lessons because one wants to be free of the suffering of exhaustion of pain of uh, of joint problems whatever it is the ailment then becomes a great thing it's almost like the universe saying to me look you're in separation you've got too much baggage you're holding on to just be with it or observe it or cancel my god did not create it it's not real you know for me the the more i i, I don't do spiritual practice the, you know the worse it gets it's like a suppression or a denial uh, and it just f flames up again but you know through through doing the course of miracles the observer being with things and not fighting them um you know, I was discharged from um, the gout, the rheumatology clinic at hospital because my gout attack stopped. I was discharged from the asthma clinic um, in hospital because my asthma attack stopped. Uh, I had a miracle with my kidney failure and had a transplant. It was like the Holy Spirit took everything away, all these Ill illnesses of separation as I did the spiritual work. So for me, miracles are possible even with health. Um, that has been my experience, but I think, um, yeah, just just using the lessons on them because they're great. Um, they're great sort of flare ups of separation to try and spiritually work on. Wow, wonderful! Thank you. Um, who'd like to um, have a comment or um, ask a question? Raise your hand. Terry, please take yourself off mute. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Sabir. I, I like your gentleness. I, I like looking at you on the screen. You, 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 you're embodying the teachings. I, I can see that it's a real thing with you, and, and that's great. Um, before I, I, I comment, I just want to say to Dennis, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when you you know you tried to explain it to your wife when you were making love to her that it was better when you came out of the body up on the ceiling watching yourself than actually making love to her but that's that's an aside it did bring a smile to my face when you said it i must admit but going back to sabia um yeah it, it it's almost like it, everything that you were describing it i think in a nutshell it's can i be willing to leave that door open a little bit for the Holy Spirit to come in and do the work for me, so to speak. Am I willing and trusting enough to just to just that little bit? We only have to be that little bit willing, don't we? Thanks, Sabia. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Yes. Anyone else? comment or a question, please raise your hand. Dennis. I've just come to the conclusion of thinking about the, that the, the play goes on without us. <laughs> and everything keeps going. Um, like for instance, I came on a train from Kruken to London and I used to look at the two trains in somebody's garden and all of a sudden it froze. We stayed in one place. And when, it, when I came back again, the train had moved off. The train had, 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 hadn't actually stopped. I'd stopped in the train. I can't explain that properly, but the, the, the play went on. That's all I can say. That's beautiful. A couple of comments in the uh, chat window. Thank you, Sabia. Beautiful understanding of the course. Thank you. And another one that says, from another person, feeling clear and timeless. Thank you so much, Sabia. Thank you. Fear for me is a, is a great one. You know, the, the, the experience of fear. For me, uh, fear, when, when I experience fear, then it's like, okay, well, fear is like, uh, you know, I sort of see it like, well, f fear is like a cloud. There was no fear. And then suddenly it's like a cloud of fear <clears throat> seems to emerge. So, but I was here before the fear was here and I'm here after the fear will pass. So what am I? 
So it's like, okay, so the fear, you know, like the Course in Miracles, I'm not, I'm not the table, you know, the table is meaningless. I, I look at the lamp, the lamp is meaningless. I look at the tree, I'm withdrawing, I'm withdrawing the, the symbolism, the projections of separation between myself and the table and the lamp. And the fear, you know, the fear for me has got so much invested projection, something wants to identify. So if I let that go, there is here, but I was observing before the fear was here and I'm still observing now the fear is here and I'm observing as the past. So I'm not the fear. I'm something prior to the fear. And so in that way, I don't get sort of enmeshed or lost in the fear. I sort of, it's almost like I, I become something beyond the fear and then it eva evaporates. <clears throat> so for that, that's the way, one of the ways I undo it. Or, or I could say, God did not create fear, it's not real. Or uh, fear is meaningless, it's as meaningless as a tree or as meaningless as a table. And in those ways, it seems like these objects my ego likes to have a big history with. Like, I don't like fear, but I like happiness. You know, the duality of it all uh, starts to dissipate. And those things which seem to be more heavy or more, more uh, symbolic of separation seem to be, become less and less in my experience as time goes by and I carry on the spiritual practice. But I think fear, you know, anything that creates fear or separation for me is a great, um, a great subject to be applying the spiritual tools. Wonderful. We have time for one more um, chat, a question. Anybody like to say anything? Hi, can I ask Sabir a question, Kirsty? Um, you mentioned a tree, Sabir. Um, you say it can be as meaningless as a tree. And I am thinking about those early lessons myself here. Um, but there's also, I mean, I work with trees quite a lot, and there's also something Eckhart Tolle talks about how you can look at a tree and you can get a sense of beingness, of stillness, of eternal beingness. You can actually awaken through a tree. There was a, um, you know, an enlightened guy called um, Brother Lawrence who wrote about the it's practicing the presence of God by looking at a tree. So how can a tree be meaningless and also, you know, the, the, you know, something so representative of God? How would you, I know that's a bit of a complex one so late on, but just wondering if you had any ideas. Oh no, no, absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. You know, God, God is in the tree and God is in the table. Uh, God is in you. God is in me. And the, the meaningless, <clears throat> You know, some of the lessons for me are what I'm saying are withdrawing my internal projections, the past associations and the meaning and the history and all the baggage my ego likes to identify with, with trees, with tables. I mean, some of them, there's less baggage, like my ego would probably have historically less baggage with the table and projections of meaning and symbolism with the table than, for example, my mother where there's so many associations and past historical stories that will create, if you like, a, a charge when I see my mother and not so much of a charge when I see a table. Uh, but that depends on my own background and my own sort of history of how my ego is associated. And all these associations then create a sense of separation, a, a sense of duality, a, a sense of charge with certain things. So while I have ego, and while my ego creates meaning or, or ideas or beliefs around certain objects, symbols, trees, uh, my mother, my father, all of this, then, then when I'm walking around, there seems to be with certain people or places or objects, certain associations. And they, there seems to be unconsciously a sense of fear and separation or some sense of fear and separation. So some, some of the lessons for me, what I'm taking are stripping away the ego of the Course in Miracles, and some of the lessons are affirming the infinite nature and oneness um, that I experience beyond uh, the fields of my ego creating separation and projections in the world. So, so yes, absolutely. I mean, those are all, each, each lesson is at a different place, uh, and each lesson will be more appropriate at certain places. But yes, you know, God is in the tree, 
and just uh, letting go of my baggage and being at one, you know, the beingness of the tree or to go into fields of beingness and timelessness, absolutely, with a tree. So for me, it's like one has to sort of see the context of uh, what a teacher is saying and what a lesson is, is aiming to do. Is it aiming for one to be at one or is, it, uh, is a lesson aiming to let go of a sense of separation within my ego projections? But of course, if all the ego is released, then there is no need, of course, to do a lesson or to do a practice because the timelessness and oneness in every moment is revealed. And anyway, that's my take on it. Thank you for the lovely question. That's brilliant, Sabir. Thank you so much for that. Okay, uh, we've come to the top of our meditation gathering. Thank you so much, Sabir. That was a wonderful um, time that we spent together. I got so much out of it. And by the way, if you want to um, uh, watch this again, it'll be on Miracle Network YouTube. And uh, uh, so please do. Please take yourself off mute and um, you can thank Sabia. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much, Sabia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan.